Hey, headphone people, Mr. Eric here. Um, big review today because this is a decision review, right? Where I've been going back and forth between a couple of things, trying to decide what I'm going to keep. And um, these are a couple of, of pretty nice amplifiers that I'm kind of settling on for the time being, at least for my end game, right? Like, I mean, I'll never say that this is my end game. I, I seem to go through that a lot, as I'm sure most of us do, but um, I'm reaching a ceiling here as far as money goes, really. So anyway, $1,000 amps, Burson Soloist 3 XP, and the Bioelectric V280 Final Edition, okay? So, these are both interesting amplifiers. They're both wonderful amplifiers when it comes down to it. And um, I could see I could see people going for either one. So let me, let's get into the build of each one. We'll talk about kind of like features, inputs, outputs, all that stuff. And then we'll get into sound, um, hopefully fairly quickly, because that's where your decision's probably ultimately coming down to, right? So uh, let's start off with the V280. It's the simpler of the two options, right? It, no remote. It's uh, balanced, got two quarter inch jacks, which is kind of cool, power button, a stepped uh, pentometer, so it like, you know, it's it's kind of clicky. Um, the, seems to be a typical like bioelectric like people thing. Um, it, it takes some getting used to, but once you, I like it though, once, once you kind of get used to it. On the back here, uh, balancing, RCA in, regular kind of PC cable in, gain switches, and uh, input selector right there. Gain switches look a little intimidating because there's you know all those little mini switches, but it's really pretty simple. If you check the manual, no big deal. I've got all mine off, um, which is just like zero dB. Uh, so yeah, no issues there. Very simple, uh, beautiful build. It's quite large, as you can see. Um, nice rubber feet on the bottom. Uh, but yeah, feels super, super solid. Very nice. The Soloist uh, obviously is a little bit more flashy. You know, it's got kind of like, it's not quite silver. It's more of like a gunmetal color. And, um, you know, it's got a display uh, volume wheel over here. Doesn't feel super nice, but it's also a button and it's not like analog. So it just is a forever scroll, you know, so it's like a multifunction button kind of. Uh, balanced quarter inch and headphone in. Didn't try the headphone in. Um, I assume it works fine, but I didn't try it. Uh, you know, you got your display, tells you gain levels, volume level, you know, all sorts of stuff there. Round on the back, a little bit more functionality than the bioelectric because you got balanced in, RCA in, and then you got balanced out. Just a quick note, um, as I was reading through the manual for the solos here, it says do not adapt the balanced out to RCA or you could damage the op amps. Um, so that's something that I've done in the past, not with this unit, but like with other things. And so I just wanted to point that out if you're one of those type of people, um, just you know, read the manual, I guess is what it comes down to. And then you've got power in. Um, power in for this guy is interesting because um, if you're looking at this Burson Solos 3XP, you probably know about the supercharger that comes with it. Now, I was skeptical of this, but when I bought mine, I bought it with the supercharger. Um, needless to say, I tried it with the regular power adapter first and did not like the Solos. Like, really um, was like, oh man, it's a little harsh and very sharp, and I just, I wasn't into it, right? plug in the supercharger and um, I think it, it made a huge difference, honestly, uh, at least for me. I thought it smoothed everything out, brought a little more detail out, was just all in all better and easier to listen to at the same time. So the supercharger makes a difference. It's worth, if you're getting a soloist, I wouldn't, I just, I wouldn't even get one without the, the supercharger to be perfectly honest with you. So um, this is that supercharger, you know, Big old power brick here and about six feet of cable is what this comes with. And like I said, for me, this was a, a needed. Uh, the other things, uh, I've got the vertical stand here, which is like these three things. And then, you know, it sits upright in those. That's pretty cool. That's how I used it. And then you've got a nice little uh, remote here, you know, aluminum, got several different buttons on it. Works well. I don't use remotes too much, but like, yeah, it, it was fine. Um, okay. So that's about it uh, as far as build goes. I would say overall, 
function goes to the Burson, build goes to the Violetric, is what I would say. So let's uh, let's dig into the sound here, which is really what kind of we want to know about what's going on, right? And they're both extremely powerful amplifiers. Um, I think maybe at its at its peak, you know, the the Violetric's like five or six watts, and I think the the Burson Solus 3XP is about eight watts. Um, I'd have to double check that, but that's off the top of my head. So they both have tons of power, should have more than enough power to power anything you want. I was running, um, I had the pleasure of running lots of different things off these amps. So, you know, Diana TC, LCD5, Susvara, HE1000, um, Focal Lex. Those are all some of the things that I've got on hand while I've been testing these. So they can drive anything, right? Uh, no problems there. When it comes to sound, they're both phenomenal. Like, really both extremely detailed. Um, but it comes down to, like, a matter of taste, really. Whereas the V280 is more of, like, a warm, smooth, liquidy sound. While still being, you know, pretty detailed. I would say the Soloist takes it up a notch in clarity just a little bit. It's more, like crisp and precise and you know tight sounding um so both kind of on on little bit different ends of the spectrum but both sound wonderful right when i'm thinking bass i, I think the soloist takes it in bass like it really does bass well and the bass is textured and goes low and has impact and just it sounds really good. I really enjoy the bass on the Solus, more so than the Violetric, which is a little bit looser, a little bit warmer, you know, a little bit more organic-y, you know, liquidy sounding. Um, not the same level of texture and detail as the Solus has, but um, I still enjoyed the Violetric V280 um, regardless. Vocals and mid-range goes to the Violetric for me. It has a richer, um, again, smoother, just just a really, really fantastic, nice mid-range on it. Vocals just come through just b like butter on this thing, like just wonderful on the V280. Um, and for me, as a, as a heavy acoustic vocal listener, I like a lot of folk Americana stuff. Um, I just thought the V280 fit that bill perfect. I just, I, I love the way the mid-range is presented on the V280. The Soloist is a little more clinical um, and not as rich when it through those middle tones. Uh, still phenomenal detail. You know, if I didn't have these side by side, I was perfectly happy listening to the Soloist, but just when I was going back and forth, I thought the Violetric, like it just resonated with me more in that area. Um, at the top end, I'm more of the same, I would say. Uh, I, I feel like, again, the Soloist edges out the, the Violetric in detail a little bit, um, but but that's at the ex expense of coming off maybe just a, a little bit sterile. It's just very clean, very, very, very clean. Whereas, again, I'd say the Violetric, while still extremely detailed, I don't feel like it quite matches the Soloist but it comes off just a little bit more relaxed and just easy going um, and just all around just kind of like a smoother listen very tubey sounding I thought the Violetric like as far as not like where it's really distorted or anything but just in the, in its richness and smoothness and so for me I think it comes down to like I, I just enjoyed things more on the V280, so that's the one that I'm going to keep. Again, that has to do, I think, with my genre that I'm into um, and also just the headphones that I'm using, I think, uh, are already towing the line of, of very neutral, so I like just that little added bit of, of richness in there. But I could easily see people going for the soloist if they're looking for just that precise, clean detail. Um, I think the Burson Soloist did a fantastic job of that. Plus, it's got a little more functionality than the Violetric does. So I think that's going to do it. Um, again, two outstanding amplifiers that just sound wonderful with everything I put on them, but they do things just a little bit differently, but both um, both very nice amplifiers. Um, 
should probably be happy to own either of them and probably shouldn't stress out too much about whether something of equal price is going to be you know as good or better or anything like that like i think you know both of these hold their weight at this price category and unless you're being extremely you know picky going back and forth and and trying those things i think you'd probably be happy with either of them and i think they both um warrant their their cost you know of about a thousand dollars on the used market i think they're both for that price i think i think they're doing what they should do yeah i think that's it uh alternative opinions you know what's your experience have you tried both these you tried one of these how do you feel about them drop those in the comments below and um you know as usual i'm gonna ask if, if you found this useful if you would like subscribe that would help me out a lot uh we're getting you know we're climbing up climbing up uh in views and subscribers and i really enjoy that so thank you for being with me i appreciate your support and i will see you in the next one